Stay all day, though. You're now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of wait for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today we are on part two of three where I'm going to explain, I'm going to fix the DIE initiative. I'm going to tell you how we actually do it the right way. And today we're going to talk about inclusion. But before I get to that, let me tell everyone, I have a daily motivation text message. Yes, a text message that I send out for free. Yes, for free. Every day, yes, every day. To everyone who's in my text community, this message is guaranteed to keep you focused, sharp, and on point. If you would like to receive it, all you gotta do is send a text to the following number, 305-384-6894. Text that number right now, and every day when I send out the daily motivation text, because you are in my community, you will be receiving that message. You can even respond to one of those messages, and you might get a response back from me, because I check those messages every day, and I do actually reply to people's text. That number's down below in the show notes as well. Another thing, I have a new free 45 minute training on how to get to the next level of revenue and income in your life and your business without killing yourself and running yourself into the ground in the process of doing so. If you want to increase your income without having to do a ton more work, then you need to be in this training. Go to workonyourgame.net. I will give you a 24 hour window to see the entire training. Again, that's workonyourgame.net, not .com.net. Now, Today's topic, how to do DIE the right way. Again, yesterday we did diversity. Today we're going to do inclusion. First of all, let's get a definition of this word inclusion. I don't need to give too much of a background on this whole subject. I did that in yesterday's episode, so go listen to it if you didn't already. Definition of inclusion is the practice or policy of providing equal access to opportunities and resources for people who might otherwise be excluded or marginalized. So these are words that you've heard a lot of these words, a lot of these buzzwords and keywords in the conversations about DIE lately, equal access, opportunities, resources, exclusion, and marginalization. Uh, we heard these terms a lot. So this definition here actually has uh, been uh, picked for use in the DIE initiatives, but see, they don't put it all together the same way. See, it's kind of like a recipe. See, if I tell you the recipe for the recipe for baking a cake doesn't mean you just do things in whatever order you want. So if you heat up the oven, after you put everything in there and then you take it out before the oven is even heated up, you take the batter out before the oven is even heated up, you don't get a cake. So you had to do things in the right order. So the diversity inclusion equity um, advocates use a lot of the words from this definition, but they don't use it in this order. And today I'm going to fix everything that they have messed up and tell you how we would do inclusion the right way. Here we go. Point number one. Topic again is how to do DIE the right way, specifically inclusion. Let's first get clear on what this does not mean. What does inclusion not mean? It does not mean that when someone has more resources than another person, that the one who has less resources is owed something. I'm pausing there because I want to let that one sit in. I want to let that one sink in. I want to say it again. Inclusion does not mean that if person A has me more resources than person B, that person B is owed something just because they have less than person A. That is not what inclusion means. Even though there are some inclusion advocates who would absolutely have you believe that that's what it means. Oh, so we have had less than them traditionally, so that means we are owed something. I mean, actually, that's, they will tell you exactly that. We're owed something because they have more than us. That's bullshit is what that is. That is not inclusion. This definition gets tricky here because we had to decide, the reason why this definition is tricky is because we had to decide how we are judging how somebody got access to opportunity and resources. So if I have had more opportunity and resources in my life than you, does that mean I've done something wrong? Does that mean life has treated you unfairly? Does that mean you are owed something? Let's dig into that. So let's say for example, if my parents had made a lot of money and they left me money. Let's say I was a trust fund baby. So when I turned 18, I got $500 million in cash available to me to do whatever I wanted with. And now, because I have all this opportunity, I went and started me a business and I invested in things. And now, uh, 20 years later, I got a lot more than you have simply because my parents set me up with a head start, right? 
So I have more access to more resources and thus I can get more things done than you can because your parents didn't leave you any money. You started at zero, I started at no 500,000 up. Now, let me ask you a question. Let's say that that happened because this does happen. There are, people, there are people out there right now whose parents did leave them some money, okay? And you might be a person whose parents did not leave you money. Maybe they even left you debt, right? Here's my question to you. Does that make the situation unfair between you and the other person? So there's somebody, their parents left them half a million dollars to get started with at age 18. Your parents left you nothing to get started with at age 18. So they're 500,000 up on you. Is that unfair? That's my question to you, audience. I would love somebody to write me and let me know what you think about that. Now let me ask another question. Should I, let's say I'm the one whose parents left me money, right? My parents left me half a million dollars. Should I, because my parents left me money, should I feel guilty? Or should I allow other people to try to make me feel guilty about this fact that my parents set me up for success and yours didn't? Or, because I mean, that's really what it is, right? My parents set me up for success. I didn't do it. My parents did something that your parents didn't do. So now I got money and you don't at age 18. It's not like you can't go get money, but I started, I didn't have to go get it. I got, it was given to me because my parents set me up for success. Yours didn't set you up for success. So should I feel guilty about the fact that my parents set me up? Or let me ask you a different question. And this is one that many people don't ask. Here's the question. Should you, instead of looking at me and saying, hey, that's not fair that you have money left to you by your parents and I don't, should you instead turn around Look at your parents and say, hey, mom and dad, why did you not leave me money like this guy's parents left him money? I mean, I mean, they had the same amount of years as, your, as the other guy's parents did, didn't they? Now, see, here's where the conversation gets uncomfortable. Now, your parents had just as much time to build up a nest egg for you as the other guy's parents had to build up a nest egg for him. Why did you have why did he have a nest egg and you don't? So instead of holding him accountable for the fact that he has something that you don't, how about you hold your parents accountable for not doing what his parents did for him? I want to let that one sink in too. Because this is one I hadn't thought of myself, as a matter of fact. I was listening to uh, somebody talk and the person said, this is what he said. He said that instead of saying, because you know, sometimes people talk about being self-made. Right? I'm self-made. You know, I started from zero, I started from nothing, and I did all this and I got success. And you hear a lot of people talk about that as if it's some badge of honor, right? I'm self-made, I started, I started from wherever I was at, at neutral, and I had to go make everything. Everything I got, I got from me. I'm first generation person with money in my family and things like that. And the guy said, well, instead of bragging about the fact that you're self-made and you started from zero, how about you hold your parents accountable for not doing their job and making you start from zero. Oh. Oh. And when he said that, I said, damn, you know what? <laughs> he might actually be right. This is, this is the question that I want to ask all of you. I want to know what y'all think about this. Somebody hit me up and let me know what you think. Because it's a very interesting question, is it not? Because see, if we, look at that, if we look at it that way, this whole conversation flips around, doesn't it? You did have access to opportunity and resources. I mean, it's not like you didn't have access. It's simply that your family didn't take advantage of them the same way that my family did. So if my family does the work and sets me up with a nest egg when I turn 18 and your family doesn't set you up, does that mean you didn't have access to resources? No, it doesn't mean you didn't have access. You had access or your parents did. They just didn't do what I did with the access. They did something different than what I did. They made different choices. That's all. You still got the opportunity to go get it. You just got to work a little bit harder to get yours. I ain't got to work hard to get mine. I already got it. My parents did the work for me ahead of time. That don't make me wrong and it doesn't make you a victim. It just means it is what it is. I mean, if I'm wrong about that, somebody let me know. What do y'all think about this? Do I need to pay a price because my parents did something that yours didn't? Are you owed something extra because your parents didn't do something that other people's parents did? Whether you agree with the question or not, here's the point. Whether you agree with me or not, here's the point. We should agree that this is a very fair question to be asked. I think this is a very interesting conversation to be had. That's what I, I do believe that that's true, no matter how you feel about it, the conversation needs to be had. What's happening with the DIE crowd is that they want to completely paper over the discussion and say, well, no, because this person didn't get a nest egg like this other person did, that means that we owe the person who didn't get it. We got to give them something extra just because. I believe that's complete bullshit. 
And this is coming from a person, my parents didn't leave me money. My parents set me up with you no know, food, clothing, shelter. They taught me discipline. They taught me you know, how to be respectful and you know, go to school, get a degree, et cetera, et cetera. But they didn't leave me any money. I had to go make mine from, from zero, just like a lot of people did. But that doesn't mean I'm some kind of victim. If I meet somebody whose parents left them money, I don't feel like a victim compared to them. I say, okay, I'm gonna catch up to you and pass you despite the fact that you started ahead of me. That's my mindset. I don't know how y'all think about things like that. But I think it's a very fair discussion to be had. Instead of holding the person whose parents set them up, I'm just using parents setting you up as an example here, but we could use others. So I'm just using that as an example because everybody can understand it. Instead of getting mad at the person whose parents set them up, you should be getting mad at your parents and saying, hey, why didn't you set me up? His parents set him up. What were y'all doing the last 30 years? Uh, his parents, what were y'all not doing that his parents were doing? I mean, I think it's a fair question to ask. Again, if anybody disagrees with me, you let me know. Because see, this flips the whole conversation over. And it flips the whole conversation on its head. And it causes people to look at things in a way that they otherwise weren't looking at. Them. What makes this whole concept of inclusion fuzzy is the fact that many people don't even want to entertain that question that I just posed to all of you. Was the exact opposite of inclusion. I mean, the whole purpose of inclusion is what? Every idea gets thrown on the table and we're going to weigh every idea equally. Or we're at least going to give every idea an equal opportunity to be, to be heard. Let's put it that way. It's a better way of saying it. We're going to give every idea an opportunity to be heard. What happens with a whole bunch of people who are pushing this whole inclusion uh, myth is they don't want to hear certain ideas. Certain ideas that will challenge their worldview, or at least their alleged worldview, because I think a lot of these people are smart enough to know that some of the stuff that they're pushing is bullshit, but because it's tied to their paychecks, they pretend that they agree with it. That a lot of them don't want to hear certain ideas because it will take their whole world and flip it upside down. They don't want their world flipped upside down. They don't actually want to include a whole lot of things, even though they're supposed to be head of inclusion. Again, if I got anything wrong here, I want you to let me know. I don't think I got anything wrong. The DIE world does not want to do this and include every idea and give equal opportunity to every idea. They don't want to do that. They only want to work with the ideas that they like and that they agree with, which is the exact opposite of inclusion. And again, if I got something wrong, let me know. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is how we do DIE the right way. Today we are talking about inclusion. Point number two, to exclude, quote unquote exclude, it means to deny someone access and to marginalize means to treat someone as insignificant or peripheral. Those are the definitions of the words, exclude and marginalize. In the world that we live in today, nobody is being denied access. Nobody who's listening to this show right now, none of you is being denied access to anything. You are not being denied access. Now, if someone's treating you as insignificant or peripheral, well, somebody could choose to do that moment by moment, but you're not being denied access to anything. Everyone has access to opportunity. Everyone has access to resources. Now, it doesn't mean you're always going to succeed with your opportunities, and it doesn't mean you'll have as many resources as the person next door to you, but you have access to them. Now, you have access. It doesn't mean you always have them, but you have access. Such as, for example, let's talk about money. You have access to getting money. Now, it doesn't mean you want to get it, but you have access to it. I mean, you can create a product, put it out into the marketplace, and offer it for sale. Now, somebody might buy it, somebody might not buy it, but it's not like you don't have access to a way to make money if you wanted to. Now, some people are better at it than others, but just because you don't have money doesn't mean you don't have access to money. Maybe you're just not good at earning it. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So that's what we mean when we hear when we say access. Access does not mean outcomes, Ibram Kendi. Uh, access does not mean outcomes. It means, do you have an opportunity to succeed? It's just like in sports. Every team has an opportunity to win the championship, but there are some teams that are just trash. They won't even make the playoffs, let alone when they win the championship. Does that mean that they didn't have access? No, they had access, they're just not good. They're just not good with their access. They just didn't make the most of their access. So we gotta make sure we're being clear and defining these things. The world that we live in today, nobody's denied access or opportunity. The difference in outcomes is reflected in what? Is reflected in what people do with their access. That's the key. How much of that access are you actually using and taking advantage of versus how much you ignore and or do not utilize for whatever reason? That's the difference in people. It's not whether you have access to opportunity, it's what you do with the opportunity. And this is the part that's not being pointed out. Actually, it is being pointed out by a lot of people. 
but it's not being pointed out by the DIE advocates because, again, if this was pointed out by the DIE advocates, then there'd be no need for a DIE advocate and a lot of these people would be out of a job, out on their asses, and they would have to go create their own opportunities, which they don't want to have to do. So they just keep pushing this idea that they're not being, that certain people are not being given opportunities because it's their whole job to act like this is what's happening. This is the whole game, folks. I'm explaining the game to y'all. I just want y'all to know what the game is. I'm not even telling you to agree with me. I'm just telling you to understand the game. Understand what the game is, whether you like it or you don't like it, just know what the game is, okay? It's just so you don't get played by the game. I say this all, all the time. The reason the show is called Work On Your Game, I want you to understand the game so that the game doesn't play you and you can play the game. But those of you who don't understand the game, the game will just keep playing you your whole life. It will play you out of your, it will play you into the casket if you don't understand what's happening. As they say, if you're sitting at the card table and you don't know who the sucker is, then the sucker is you. So the difference in outcomes, folks, is based on what people do with access, is not whether or not they have access. Not everybody has access. You're listening to this right now, you have Wi-Fi, you got a smartphone, and you have a, enough leisure time in your life you'd be listening to a podcast. All right, you got access. So I don't wanna hear that shit from anybody who listens to this show. So how much of it are you using is the question. Every student on a college campus, for example, I know I got some college students who listen to this show. Every one of you, student, you have access to tutors, don't you? Are there, are there tutors at the school that you work, that you, that you go to? Yes, there are. Now, you might not know about them. You might not know where to find them. I guarantee you, if you needed to find the tutors on your campus, there's a phone number you can call and say, hey, where can I find a tutor for math? I guarantee you, whoever answers that phone will tell you where to find them. There are tutors on your campus. You know where the library's at on your campus, college student? Is there any college student listening to this right now who does not know where the library is on your college's campus? Or you don't have access to the library. You're not allowed in the library. Are they just blocking you because you're a man, because you're a woman, because you're black? Then if you block from the library, no? Okay, right. Now, many people who don't take advantage of the tutors in the library, you fail out of school, right? Any of you know anybody who failed out of college? I know a bunch of people who failed out of college, and guess why they failed out? I don't know exactly why, but let me tell you why they didn't. Let me tell you one reason why they didn't fail. It's not because they were denied access to the tutors in the library. It's because they didn't use the tutors in the library. That's why they failed out. Everybody understand what I'm saying? They, they had access, they didn't take advantage of the access. The person you're listening to is an athlete. I was a professional basketball player for almost 10 years. Every athlete I knew from high school, in the, the neighborhood I grew up in, the middle school, the high school, the college, to the pros, every athlete I knew, we all had access to the gym. Any of you who was watching me back in the YouTube basketball days. I know there are some people listening to the show who've been listening to me or following my material since back when I used to post basketball drills on YouTube every day. Remember those videos I used to post? You, any of you who didn't, you can look me up on YouTube and you'll see the videos. A lot of the videos that I did on YouTube back in the day, I would, be, I would always get this question from people and the concept of the third day actually came from this. This is my book, The Third Day. For those of you who don't know about it, this is the last book that I put out. The decision that separates the pros from the amateurs. If you don't have this book, get it. A lot of basketball players would see me in the gym all the time and I would always be in this empty gym. It's a beautiful gym, immaculate gym, but the gym would be empty. It would just be me and nobody else. And players would always ask me, Dre, how do you get the gym to yourself? They thought, I did it. do you own a gym? Is the gym attached to your house? Do you block everybody else? Do you rent the gym out? No, the answer was no to none of those. This is a public gym that anybody can get into. It costs $10 a month to come to the gym. $10 a month, not a day, a month to come to the gym. It was empty except for me every day. Why? Was I the only person who had access? No, the whole city had access to the gym. You can find it on Google Maps. The reason why I was the only one in the gym because I'm the only one who took advantage of the access. That's how I made 7,000 videos in that empty gym because I'm the only one who took advantage of the access. Not because I had some special privilege that nobody else had. Every athlete got access to the gym. Some of them take advantage and some don't. In the long run, this is what reflects in people's outcomes. What do you do with the access that you do have? Not what access are you denied. Again, the world that we live in now None of you is denied access to anything. Now, maybe your ancestors, you know, two, maybe four or five generations back, maybe. That ain't got a damn thing to do with you. And any of you who wants to make the argument, well, what happened to your ancestors? What does that have to do with what you're doing? What are you taking advantage of right now today? Don't give me the story about what happened to somebody else. What are you doing? See, this is the conversation that a lot of the DIE folks don't want to have. So this is why when they grab that definition, the definition of inclusion. People who might otherwise be excluded or marginalized. That's where you get this bullshit phrase, traditionally mar marginalized communities. Is that what they say? Traditionally mar marginalized. What the hell does that mean? 
traditionally margin, marginalized. So what, is, what does that mean? Somebody explain to me what that means. So I'm black, okay? So we can safely assume that some people from my family, depending on how far, if I go back far enough, I'll find some people who were slaves in America or somewhere in the world were slaves, right? So does that make me traditionally marginalized and therefore I'm owed something because some people four, five, six generations back from me were in a position where they actually were literally denied access. What does it have to do with me and the access that I have full, I have, I'm fully open to all access. I've never been denied access to anything because of my color, my whole life, and I'm 40 years old. What does that have to do with me? See, this is what the inclusion people want to do. They want to take this marginalized thing, they want to paste it on certain groups so that they can hand them something and then use it against other groups so they can deny them things. So basically, like Ibram Kennedy said, the only answer to past racism is current racism. The only answer to current racism is future racism. He actually says this in his book, folks. If y'all think that's crazy what I just said, it's written in his book. And this guy's going to colleges and teaching and doing consulting gigs. Go look it up. This is actually happening, folks. Everybody has access these days. In the long run, what's reflected is your outcomes. There was a woman, I'll give you another example. This is a woman who reached out to me. She's a reader of my work. And I know this woman personally, have met her personally. I'm not gonna say her name, but if she's listening, she knows who she is. And when I tell this story, she'll know exactly who I'm talking about. She's a reader of mine, and she replied to one of my emails once, and she said, well, Dre, I was saying something around this whole concept of marginalization and et cetera, and the excuses that a lot of people try to make either because they are or making excuses on behalf of people of color, just to use that as an example. I believe it was something about black people that I wrote, because she's black. And she wrote me back and she said, well look, some black people are just not being given access. They're being denied access. That was her, what she said to me. That was her kind of counter argument to the point that I had made, which was sounded something like what I just said to you all. And I asked her, well okay, give me some proof. Give me an example of what you're referring to. She wrote me back and she gave me a link to an article that said, that only 7% of government contracts that have been given out in the city of Miami, because this woman is in South Florida, said only 7% of government contracts were given to black applicants in the course of one calendar year. This is a couple of years ago that this whole thing happened. And this was her argument. That so after seven. she sends me this information, this alleged information, this article that she sent to me that said 7% government contracts to black applicants, I pointed out to her that the article that she sent me had omitted some crucial data. Now, before I even tell you what the data is, I want to know if any of you identify what it is. Because, see, this is a critical thinking skill right here. So let me, let me tell, you the, tell you the information that was given to me again. I want you to point out, if you can, what's missing. She said, some black people are just not given access. I said, give me proof. She sent me an article. Here's what, here's what the article said. In one calendar year, only 7% of government contracts that had been granted in Miami were given to black applicants, period. That was the headline of the article. I read the article and that's what it said. Only 7% of all the contracts the government had given out had been given to black people. And she said she was presenting this as proof that black people were being denied access. Does any of you identify what is missing from this article and what was missing from her argument? All right, time's up. Here's the answer. The data that is missing is how many black applicants were there. Because let's just say there were 100 grants, 100 government um, contracts given out, right? But out of the 100, only 7 of the 7%, 7 out of 100 were black people. But what if all 7 were all the black people who applied. But there were only seven black applicants, so the government gave contracts to every single black person who applied, but there were only seven people. The other 93 were white, Latino, Asian, and everything else. We don't know because the article omitted this information. And let me tell you, I'll give you my theory on why they omitted this information, because if they had put the information in there, it would have disproven the whole narrative that they were trying to push. Maybe there are only 10 black applicants, so they gave it to 70% of the black people. Maybe there were only seven. They gave it to all 100% of them. You see, if they put that in there, then they wouldn't be able to claim racism. By just saying only 7%, all they did, all the media did, and this is why I told you that journalism is dead. I did a whole article, not an article, actually, I did do an article on it. I did a episode of my show on this. That was episode number 2016, Why Journalism is Dying. The reason why journalism is dying is because journalism used to 
inform people of what they needed to know and telling them information that they, it was basically filling in the gaps of people's knowledge. Nowadays, journalism banks on people's ignorance. See, that article banked on the ignorance of this woman and the ignorance of a bunch of other people that they wouldn't know what critical questions to ask and they wouldn't be able to look at that headline and look at the story and say, wait a minute, this article is omitting a very important piece of information, which will completely debunk the narrative that the headline is trying to push, which is how many people actually apply for the government contracts. Because if we don't know that, then we can't say that it's racist just because there were only 7% who were given contracts. We need all the information. There's information missing from this. So without that data, we can't say whether that information proved anything or not. See, this is how the media banks on people's ignorance. And this woman's lack of critical thinking skills got put on display when she sent me this article. She didn't even know what questions to ask, yet she was trying to draw a conclusion based on incomplete data. And let me tell you the funny part of all of this. All right, you wanna know what this woman does for a living? This woman who sent me this article as proof that black people are being denied access. And this is in like, this is in the last two or three years that this happened, okay? You wanna know what this woman does for a living? She's a school teacher. <laughs> we are in trouble, folks. We are really, really, really in trouble. All right, this woman teaches at a school. She's teaching your kids how to think. She don't even know how to think. It's not funny, but it is. The very people preaching inclusion don't understand how to think critically, nor do they understand how to formulate an article argument, and they don't know how to read data. But they know how to push emotional talking points. And again, y'all sending y'all kids to these schools, okay? Point, point three. Today's topic, once again, is how we do DIE the right way. We are talking about inclusion. Number three, the new report card, quote unquote, in addition to simple performance-based measurements, that is a report card is how you perform. There should be a new report card based on how much, on a percentage basis, a person, that's you and me, how much we take advantage of the resources and opportunities that are freely and readily available to us. There should be a report card for that for every human on the planet. Here are all the resources and opportunities available to you. Here's the percentage of those opportunities which you have actually taken advantage of. So then when somebody is failing in life, we see that report card of their failure of performance and results. Let's also look at their report card of what opportunities have and access have they actually taken advantage of. We see that they're failing in results, but they're also failing in taking advantage of opportunities. Okay, well it makes sense that you're failing. It makes sense that you're not going anywhere. If a student is failing out of college or high school or middle school, and then we see that they're not taking advantage of the textbooks, they're not taking advantage of the tutors, they're not taking advantage of the extra credit, they're not taking advantage of the study hall, and, and they're failing in school, we say, okay, well, no wonder you're failing, mofo. You ain't doing anything. You're not doing any work. Of course you're failing. When somebody's health is failing, and then we look at their life and we see that they're not taking advantage of the gym, they're not taking advantage of the, of the water and fruits and vegetables, they're not taking advantage of making good decisions, they're not taking advantage of the being smart as far as what they put in their body, and then we see that they're failing physically, and we say, okay, of course you're failing. You're not taking advantage of the opportunities and access available to you. See, why don't we start get grading people on that? See, if we started grading people on that, then a whole bunch of people who have gripes about access and opportunity would be really, really quiet because we'd be holding the mirror up to them. But again, see, the people who are DIE advocates, they don't want to do all this because it would basically eliminate their jobs as they know it. They would no longer have a job. So what would happen if we did this, when a person underperforms, all we would do is the first thing we're gonna look at is, okay, let's see, what is this? Are you taking advantage of the opportunities and resources available to you? If you're not, then of course you're failing. Okay, you're failing because you ain't doing any work, get out. That's how it would go. It's kind of like if you went to the doctor's office and you said, doc, my, my stomach is hurting and I feel like I got high blood pressure and my heart feels like it's working way harder than it needs to work and the doctor says, okay, well, let's look at your, let's look at your nutrition report card. Oh, okay. You haven't been to the gym in six years. Uh, you're eating bacon every single day. You're eating potato chips, and you're spending six hours a day sitting on the couch watching Netflix. Of course you're, of course you're about to die, motherfucker. Make some better decisions. Get out of my office. All right, it'd be over. The whole conversation be over. But we don't want to do that because that would require holding people accountable. And accountability is like accountability is like kryptonite to some people. But. Let's say on the other hand, a person is underperforming, yet they are taking advantage of the resources and opportunities available to them. Let's say they are taking advantage, they're just not producing with those resources and opportunities. Maybe we could grade this person on the curve and maybe we'd be willing to help this person make better use of what they're trying to use. Now the doctor could say, okay, you're working out and you're eating good and you're trying to make the right decisions, but things are still not working out. All right, I will help you out because at least you're making an effort. At least you're trying to meet me halfway. Not that we give them an A, but we give them a little bit of grace because at least they put the effort into trying to create success as opposed to the person who does nothing and then they try to get a get out of jail free card. 
See, this idea would be need to be worked on and shaped a little bit more, but I'm giving you a general framework of it. I can understand the value of this. You see, a lot of success in people, a huge percentage of success in life people, is simply showing up and giving an effort. Many people fail, not because they don't have access, because they don't even try. They, the DIE initiative, what it does is it offers a lifeline to losers. That's what the DIE is doing in 2022 and beyond because nobody in America is being denied access based on your uh, who you are right now. That's not happening. So what DIE does is offers a lifeline to people who are losing to use it as an excuse, to use their race, their gender, and their orientation as an excuse for why they don't have the success that they want. And then DIE is actually co-signing it by giving them things that they haven't earned while simultaneously penalizing the people who are winning, the people who are taking advantage of opportunities, or come from a lineage of people who have taken advantage of opportunities. So if I set my child up for success because I did the work and now my child has more opportunities than they even had to earn because I earned the opportunities and they're coming from my family, which is what I'm supposed to do, that's my duty. All right, does that mean something? my son did something wrong? Does that mean he should be penalized because I did the work to set him up for success? Of course not. But if DIE has their way, that's exactly how it's gonna be because that's what's happening right now. And let me be clear, this is not just about race. Because again, I'm talking about myself, I'm black. There are black people whose family started at pretty much the, the same place. And end slavery and without civil rights, all that stuff. Yet, when we get to the diversity, when we, we'll get diversity, excuse me, we get diversity amongst outcomes in the black community to this very day. Are, are there black people who have money? Of course there are. Are there black people who are poor? Yes, there are. But didn't all their ancestors start as slaves? Somebody explain the difference to me. What happened? How are there black people whose all their ancestors were all slaves? Are they all were slaves at the same time? They all became free at the same time. Yet you got some black people with money right now today and they can set their kids up for success with trust funds and college, college funds and money and all that stuff. And there are black people who are poor living in the ghetto with nothing going on right now. How'd that happen? They all start in the same spot, right? They can't blame white people for that. But nobody wants to talk about this. What's the difference? It ain't a difference in inclusion, not a difference in access, and it's not a difference in marginalization. So you can't use any of those as excuses. It's a difference in who took advantage of the opportunities available to them and who didn't. That's it. Who laid down and whined about their situation and who didn't. Again, and we are having an, an, an inclusive, if we're having an inclusive conversation, every argument must be considered. So how often do you hear anyone making a point that I just made? Now, if my point is based in some wrong headedness, again, let me know. But my point is pretty clear and it's pretty objective. Why don't you hear this argument more often? I mean, we're all about inclusion, right? Why don't you hear this argument from the inclusion folks? Because it's not about inclusion. That's the whole point. Let's recap today's class, which is how to do DIE the right way. This is part two, inclusion, which is defined as the practice or policy of providing equal access to opportunities and resources for people who might otherwise be excluded or marginalized. Number one, first we're clear on what inclusion does not mean. It does not mean that if person A has more resources than person B that somebody was done wrong or that something's wrong with the person with more resources because we gotta judge how somebody got access. If your parents did the work and set you up for success that somebody else's parents didn't do to set them up for success, it doesn't mean that you're wrong, it doesn't mean that they're owed anything. It just means, hey, this is the game. All right, you instead of holding the person who has more than you accountable for having more than you, you need to hold your parents accountable for not setting you up like their parents did. I mean, that's your parents' job, actually, to set you up for success. So if they didn't do it, then you need to be calling your parents and say, hey, mom, dad, why don't y'all do this for me the way other people did it for them? See, that requires self-accountability and internal accountability, which a lot of people just don't want to hear. Moving on, point number two. To exclude means to deny access and to marginalize means to treat someone as insignificant or peripheral. The world they live in today, nobody's denied access. Nobody listening to this right now is denied access. Uh, you have access, you have opportunity, you have re access to resources. The difference is what you do with the access, not whether you have it. It's what are you doing with it? People who are failing out of college is because they don't take advantage of the access they have to tutors and to the library. People who are not in good shape, they don't take advantage of the access they have to working out and watching a, a YouTube workout video or going to the damn gym. It's not that you don't have access, it's just you're not doing it. And this is where I had somebody reach out to me saying me, giving me some example of only 7% of government contracts went to black people, but they didn't, the article left out a critical piece of information, how many black people actually applied for the contracts. And this person didn't know that that information was missing. And I said to them, do you realize this article is missing a critical piece of information? This is a school teacher. This is a person who is teaching your kids how to think 
they don't even know how to think. They're supposed to be teaching your kids critical thinking. They aren't even a critical thinker. And these are your these are your school teachers, folks. Y'all better pay attention to what's happening in these schools because they are teaching your kids and your kids will come out just as ignorant and a lack of critical thinking as they are if y'all don't are y'all aren't watching these people and what they're doing. And number three, the new report card should be how much people are taking advantage of the opportunities that are available to them versus as opposed, not as opposed to, in addition to the results that they actually produce. All right, because a lot of people are failing not only in performance, but they're failing in taking advantage of opportunities. So it makes perfect sense that they're failing. So a person who's failing in performance, but they they have an A in taking access, meaning they are using the stuff, they're just not doing well with it. I'm willing to help that person out because I see that they're willing to meet me halfway. But if you're not doing any of the work and you're failing, well, it makes perfect sense that you're failing. You're supposed to be failing. All right, you're setting yourself up for failing through your actions. All right, you should fail. And no, nobody should help you out. Nobody should offer you a safety net. You, should, you deserve to fail if you are not doing the work. All right, this is the way that it works. And since we're talking about inclusion and marginalization and all of this stuff, and black people want to use this, a lot of black people, not all of them, but a lot of black people want to use this as an excuse. Okay, well, how do you explain how there are rich black people today and there are poor black people today when everybody started the same spot as slaves? Now, again, if the argument is inclusion, why hasn't this argument been included in the conversation? I mean, it's about inclusion, right? Inclusion means all arguments should be considered. Why hasn't that one been considered? And why is nobody talking about it? See, this is when people get quiet. With all that being said, tomorrow we're going to get into part three of this. And on, in addition to that, text me to get my daily motivation free of charge straight to your phone every single day. My number is 305-384-6894. And go to workonyourgame.net to get access to a 45-minute training that I just put out how to get to the next level, your next level, your next milestone financially without running yourself into the ground in order to do it. That's at workonyourgame.net. Work on your game. Dre all day.